Hey everyone, welcome back to Tool Talk. I'm Sharon and today I want to have a chat about charcoal. Uh, charcoal is one of my all-time favorite soldering surfaces. It has a great ability to reduce the amount of oxygen around your piece so you don't wind up with fire scale. It's super reflective so if you have a weaker torch like something with butane uh, or even propane oxygen, uh, it's great at reflecting heat back up into your piece and it just makes really great quick work of your soldering process. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you today specifically about compressed charcoal and all of the ways that you can use it and modify it and really make it into one of the most versatile soldering tools that you have. So this is my old charcoal block. I've probably had this one for over a decade. Uh, it is compressed charcoal, so you can carve right into it, but it also lasts a long time. Like you can see, I don't have any binding wire around it. If you use the softer charcoal, the not compressed charcoal, the more traditional charcoal, you usually have to bind it up with something, uh, either steel wire or make a frame for it out of copper. But I've found over time that compressed charcoal tends to hold up really well. Um, this is a less used side. Uh, this is a more flat surface. Um, and let's talk about how I went from this to this. Okay, so I've got my charcoal block here on my bench. Um, you can see I do have my respirator nearby. I highly recommend if you do what I'm about to do with your charcoal that you wear a respirator or an N95. Uh, however, uh, you might not be able to hear me if I put on my respirator, so I might risk it today and not. So this is definitely a do as I say, not as I do. Uh, so what you're gonna need for this part is a bulber. You can take an old one, it doesn't really matter. Um, I happen to have, I think this is like a four millimeter bulber. Uh, the larger the better sometimes with this charcoal. So what you can do to modify it, so you can actually make charcoal into basically like a little crucible. So that's what this divot is here in this charcoal block. And you can see that I've modified it over the years for all kinds of things. I've made little channels. Uh, this was a really handy way to hold a super complicated piece where I needed part of it to not get oxidized because it was it needed to stay silver. Uh, and I didn't, for various reasons, this particular piece, I couldn't go back and finish it. So this created an atmosphere that was reducing. In other words, it reduced the oxygen. And it made it so that I could hold the piece, solder it up on top here, but keep it protected down below. And then this has been a little crucible for myself for doing small melts. And then I have these other rounded divots in here. And this is great when you wanna ball up uh, silver or gold and you want it to be totally round. Like if you just ball it up on the charcoal block, like there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you'll wind up with a flat side. So if you want to not have that, uh, you'll wanna make these little round divots probably with a ball burr kind of like this. And it's really simple. Um, if you only have hand tools, there are ways you can do this, but it's a lot easier if you have a flex shaft to do it. And all you really have to do is come over here. And because it's a round burr, it's just gonna make like a nice little rounded hole. See? And then I like to reserve the charcoal dust uh, if you ever want, find yourself soldering on a surface that's not charcoal, that's not reducing, you can actually use bits of charcoal dust or like chunks of charcoal that split off of here and you can save it. And you can kind of create a reducing atmosphere on a different kind of soldering board. And this is all you have to do. So like if I wanted to go ahead and make this into a little crucible, all I do is I make a little square. right? Or actually, I guess, okay, strictly speaking, more of a rectangle. That's totally fine. But you just outline it. And then what I'm going to do is continue to use the ball burr. And I'm just going to carve it out. Uh, the other kind of tool you can use, I have this 
Uh, I guess it's an inverted cone burr, but it's got a flat side. I, and I'm gonna use that to just flatten and smooth out the base of this mini crucible that I've made. And this is gonna be good if you're ever making, say, a small melt that you're gonna wind up rolling down and turning into sheet, you'll want this surface to be fairly smooth. So why compressed charcoal is so awesome. So look at that. So now we have a, like a nice smooth ingot. It's gonna reduce the amount of oxygen, so it's gonna prevent fire scale. And that's gonna be a really great way to melt down small pieces of scrap at your bench. If you've ever been into making prong settings and you want a way to uh, reduce the amount of oxygen while also holding your prongs still, one of the things that I've done is I've basically turned my charcoal block into a jig for soldering prong settings. And what I mean by that, and I'm gonna try to zoom in on this, but there's some holes drilled in there from before. But let's say that I knew I wanted to make a prong setting. I can just come over here, drill my holes. This is where the wire can go to stand up and make it really, really easy to jam some wire in there and seat the rest of your prong setting for soldering. And what this does is it not only holds the prongs in place, but it also creates that reducing atmosphere so the prongs that are stuck into the charcoal block aren't going to get covered in fire scale, uh, which is great because especially if you're working in silver, uh, Polishing a silver prong is already tricky enough and trying to get fire scale off of it is even trickier. So it's gonna reduce the amount of time that you have to spend finishing. And I'm always a huge fan of anything that helps you to reduce time in finishing. So now what I would like to do is bring you over to the solder station uh, to do just a quick demo on why it is that I like the charcoal block. Okay, so I just want to show you how it looks to solder on one of these charcoal blocks if you haven't used one of these before. And just talk a little bit about why it is that I like these so much. Uh, a while back I designed this whole chain that was made out of 14 gauge silver wire, which is great, but you know, you've got like, you know, 30 links and you're going to need to do a bunch of them all at once and charcoal was just the most efficient way to do it because charcoal is so reflective that when, as you heat your block the heat's reflected back up and it made soldering those 14 gauge links go much faster so i'm just gonna do a really quick demo oops maybe a little too much flux it does have a tendency to soak up the flux but that's okay as long as there's some on the metal But you can see like if I just turn up my torch. So I use the little torch and that's part of the reason why I got started on charcoal blocks too is because the, the little torch has such a small flame but the charcoal block is so reflective that it's okay to use a small flame to solder something maybe a little bit bigger than you normally would because there's so much heat coming up from the bottom. So you can kind of see like if I just heat on the charcoal, it gets a little red. I mean, this is kind of like when you go camping and you use charcoal to heat your grill. It retains heat really well. And so the other great thing about charcoal is that if you're soldering a bunch of stuff on this block, if you start over here soldering, it's gonna build heat and build heat and build heat so that by the time you got all the way over to here, these pieces will solder much faster. Ta-da, and that's all the time that it took. It was really just bloop, and then you're done. This is also a great surface, by the way, for doing things like fusing. If you work with Argentium, if you work with fine silver, the charcoal block is great for fusing. 
that's been today's edition of Tool Talk, all about compressed charcoal. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, post them in the comments or feel free to leave a comment on our blog. I would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or subscribe to our blog. I try to put these up as often as possible and these are my totally honest reviews of different jewelry tools. I don't take any commissions. I don't accept any tools as gifts. There's no affiliate marketing going on here. This is just tools that I have found helpful and I hope that you do too. Have a great day, thanks.